What's up everybody? So it's amazing to be part of this experience and being part of, honestly, it's amazing being part of you guys' lives and just doing all this together. Um, and this is what it's about is living the Christian life where it's beyond Sunday. And um, that is something that we truly live out and that people see it. The world sees it, you know, so here we go. You know the stressors of the the job I had to take care of an ill parent it was a lot it was really hard for me and I was having a difficult time uh, dealing with all that right so in the evenings when I would come home I would one glass of wine and then one turn into two two into three to where it became a habit mm -hmm. it just became a habit and it uh, it wasn't it was affecting my my marriage, my relationship. Uh, you know, I we did everything and anything to deal with that addiction, and not just on top of that, you had the uh, depression. You know, because you you just being so hard on yourself that uh, it, it just everything just came down on me, and I was trying to deal with it with numbing it. My my. Issues, I was just numbing them, right? And sleeping a lot, just sleeping a lot. And that was my life. Dark, lonely, sad. Um, until we we ended up at a dealership, at an RV dealership. And the gentleman there, he gave us a long story short, he gave us a Bible and he said, my favorite verse is here. And, you know, we said, thank you, we left. And I, I told Steve, Maybe we should go to church. How, what do you think? He said, you know what? I, I think God's been talking to me too. Mm -hmm. And we're not people that talk about God or, or church or anything. Like yeah. We were not. And I said, well, let's go tomorrow. There's a church across the street. And we went. Well, we, we got up. We got ready. I couldn't find my, I, I had previously had a, an older church. I couldn't find it. So I told Steve, I'm just gonna grab the one, guy, the one that the guy gave us. And he's like, no, look for your nice church uh, Bible. I said, no, we don't have time. I grabbed the, the little paper um, cover Bible. We go to this church, we're sitting all the way to the end. And the, the preacher starts talking, the pastor, and all of a sudden on the, on the screen, he, he, there's a scripture. And Steve, like, he's like, give me your Bible. And I give him the Bible. He opens it up and he shows me. And it's the exact same wow. verse from the gentleman from the dealership. His name is Will Smith. And I felt like, I felt cold and I felt this feeling like I wanted to cry really, really bad. But I knew we were there. And I knew we were not ever going to let it go, that yeah. feeling. Long story short, it's been months since we've been diligently, we've missed church a couple of times, but we've been diligently learning about the word. And for me to see my husband with the, with the Bible and coming home and studying in the office, reading his Bible or early in the mornings. Mm -hmm. I mean, our life has transformed and it continues to transform. Yes, we've fallen, you know, we've, we've, we've we have, we're still dealing how to fight those, you know, spiritual battles and our own battles, but we cannot give up. We yeah. can't give up. We're not letting go. So we've decided together that it's time for us to get baptized and continue our journey and just be disciples because the way that gentleman changed our life and you and your family and the churches that we go to. I want to be like that. I want to change people's lives. Mm -hmm. 
That's what I was born for. That's right. Not to, you know, go on vacations or That's buy right. expensive cars. <laughs> I want to touch someone the way they changed me. And um, it's not easy. It's not easy because we get in our ways. But we can do it. Together we can do We can't give up. I tell Steve, we're going to be chicken sometimes, but we can't. We can't. A little bit about myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up as a confirmed Episcopalian. And a part of me has always believed in God and believed in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Uh, nevertheless, uh, throughout my adult life, I, uh, I was more like a Christian of convenience. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I just, whenever I needed help, when I was in trouble, I'd call on God. Then I'd start praying or then I'd go to church or, you know, and I just, I'd always feel like a hypocrite because when things were okay, uh, I, I'd stop going to church or I'd stop praying or stop thinking about God. And, uh, so throughout my adult life, I also like, I'd, I'll just say this, it wouldn't be uncommon for me to have a conversation with someone about faith, mm -hmm. about God, about Jesus. And I always walk away feeling guilty uh, for not having a better relationship yeah. uh, with God. But by the, by the next day, those feelings would generally be gone or forgotten about. You know, I just kind of forget, oh yeah, I had that feeling of guilt and then, you know, next day it's gone. But, this particular occasion, I had a conversation on Friday afternoon uh, with one of my coworkers. And I took that as my first signal. I was like, okay, like it's been a while, and it, so I had those same feelings of guilt. That was a Friday afternoon. Saturday morning, woke up, and then Yuri, I, and if you heard my wife's testimony, she described a meeting with a gentleman at, uh, at, um, at, a, at an RV dealership. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a second conversation, and that, that was unusual for me to have two conversations two days in a row, and that's, that I definitely took as a, as a sign that kind of strengthened my feelings of this guilt of not having a, a good relationship with God. And as she had stated, uh, that gentleman prayed for us, gave us a paperback Bible, and uh, came back to the car, and we had this conversation, like, hey, I really think God's talking to us. I think as he's calling us, and not that he's ever left us. I just hadn't been paying attention in much in the way that I am now. And uh, thank God. Uh, thank God uh, I, we, I heard this time, and I received the message. I want to tell another thing is, you know, Nestor Vargas, who I'd known for six, seven years now. Uh, funny how our positions have changed. Because at one time, uh, you know, in our worldly life, uh, I was a supervisor and he was an employee. And uh, at the time, I thought I was in a at a at a position of mentorship and how much the roles have changed. God has a funny way of working people into our lives. And I th thank God to this day that Nestor and his family, Melissa and his kids are in our lives because really uh, he has been the mentor for me in my search for God and, and learning of Jesus' love for us. And I, I'm truly, truly a, a appreciative of, of the way God places people in our lives. And it's just humbling and uh, uh, man, it's, it's just been a, a, a tremendous journey. I was uh, having a conversation with my wife this morning and some people that I, that I go to church with. I was struggling because in the past couple days, I'd had feelings of distance from God. And I was really praying on it this morning. I'm like, why am I feeling this distance? What, what is happening to me right now? What is it? And I, I have had much more joyous feelings and thoughts of God and Jesus. And I was just learning that, you know, in dealing with this, with all my troubles and battles, it's always been in the flesh. And now I have to fight this in, in spirituality, in, in my spirit. And that has been, and man, it's just been really, I was reading on it and, and learned, like, and I was heartened when I was reading something I think is Ezekiel 36 uh, and talking about how, how God will give me a new heart of flesh. Do you remove my heart of stone and, and give me a new heart of flesh? It's like these just messages constantly talking to me and I was 
heartened by his message to me this morning just just reading the Bible. So I, I, I just uh, I don't know if I can point to the exact moment, the exact time, but I will say, uh, you know, I have had a strong change of heart in the past. I would say three months, three and a half months, or so, four months. Uh, it's just been an incredible journey, and I, I think it's, it's, it, it, God is working in me ways that I can't even understand right now. And, and I'm, I'm just grateful that uh, I've, I've come to an awakening. I've come to a, a, a consciousness of His presence in my life and, and Jesus' love for us. And uh, I, I, I can't wait to find out what He has in store for me. And it's, it's learning like it's not. Not necessarily going to be my way, it's going to be God's way for me. And I just, I, I can't wait to learn what that is. Yeah. And, and when we came out here, I didn't know exactly like, okay, I envisioned like, okay, we're going to sit down, we're going to hear your testimonies and all that stuff. But out of all the places to sit down, I just realized right now, this is perfect. Because I'm not sure if you noticed, but behind you is a statue of Jesus. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. And he's holding the hand which is a symbol of every woman and every man when you feel that he's not listening that he does care yeah. he does care and that's exactly what he does he holds your hand and he just looks at you and he shows you that he always loved you and he wants that relationship with you um and that's exactly what's happening he has called both of you by name together as one flesh as husband and wife and that's exactly how he's looking at both of you and this is only the beginning of an amazing story that he's literally writing down the pages of your life. But it's exactly what you said, uh, Yudi, and you touched bases. It's not about living this selfish life, about going on trips and consuming. It's about experiencing the power of God, the love of God, which is perfect, and then telling other people about that. Mm -hmm. That is why we're here. Your old ways have passed away. All of those lies from the enemy are gone. Whoever we were in the flesh is dead and buried in this water. And it is nailed to the cross with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when your body rises back up from this water, I want you to understand that you are, according to the scriptures, you are a new creation made new. And may those lies from the enemy never come back again and haunt you. Because in God's eyes, you are covered by the blood of Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, and you are a new creation. You're given a new name, and you are adopted as a son of the Most High. You ready? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you were buried and rose again on the third day. I believe that you were buried and rose again on the third day. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. This day I want you to be my Lord. This day I want you to be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I give you my all. I give you my all. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. And thank you for being my master. And thank you for being my master. Today, I baptize Steve in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Once again, I love you guys' story. I love the fact that, you know, um, how God moves. You can't make this stuff up. You know, God has a plan, how he puts people together, and, and, and he loves us so much that he calls us by name. He doesn't forget us. So I want you to know, Yudi, that today what you're, once again, like I told Steve, you are expressing what the Almighty God has done in your life already. And you're gonna proclaim it with your words and know today that when your body hits this water, that you are buried in Christ. And when your body comes out of this water, you have been resurrected in the name of Jesus Christ. A new creation, perfect in all of your ways. And he's got you. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will fall on both of you guys and just do mighty works in your life. Are you ready to make this proclamation here physically in front of everyone and spiritually? 
right? We're all celebrating here. Even even strangers are celebrating because we're brothers in Christ. Amen. <laughs> so today, I just want you to repeat after me. Can I know that you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe that he died on the cross for your sins? Do you believe that on the third day he rose again and he's sitting on the right hand of God on the throne, that he has created almighty of all things? I want you to say this day, I give my life to you. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. My Savior. I want you to forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I come to you with my all. This day, this day, I give you my life. I give you my life. Beauty, right now, I will baptize you in front of everyone, in front of the world, and even spiritually. Everything that has ever attacked you, it is let loose right now in the mighty name of Jesus. It can no longer touch you or harm you or lie to you or whisper to you because according to the scriptures, it says that you will be a new creation, a new name, and you will be a, 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 a daughter of the Most High. This day, Yuri, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, so if, if you guys don't mind, thank you for being part of this. If you don't mind extending your arms uh, as we close out in prayer for them, as we know, it says that the, the, the heavens open up for just one life that gives themselves to the Lord. So just extend your hands. Here we go. I stand right here as husband and wife. I want you guys to hold hands and remember this. I want you to remember this moment. This is an amazing couple that I personally know, just like all of us have been through so, so much, but only God can change lives. Only God can make a new creation. Only God can give blessings like this. So I just want to pray for you guys real quick. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so, so much for what you are doing. Thank you for using a family like this, a husband and wife like this, to not just be bold, but to express their belief that you are Lord and Savior in front of everyone, Lord because you are God, you are mighty, you do change lives, you do give us new names, and you do sit on the throne. And just thank you for the gift, thank you for this, for this marriage. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit will fall on both of them, Lord Jesus. That every single thing that they struggled with, if it was alcoholism, anger, bitterness, anxiety, depression, may all those things right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be broken and let loose by in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May no weapon formed against you ever prosper because the Holy Spirit is on you, upon you, and you are covered by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this couple. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> it's a celebration. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, thank you, brother. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, brother. Oh, man, brother. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, hallelujah. You see how the family grows really quick? Yeah. <laughs> New members, absolutely. <laughs>